costumers. Whoa. Oh, I can see Careful. why. Beauty starts and ends with her. If I had eyes, they'd be sparkling. Oh, wow, she's a real life goddess. <laughs> Hey hey my dear pirates, you are on channel, Straw Hats One Piece Theories, and in today's video we're going to talk about Brook and his true purpose within the One Piece anime. Now that One Piece has entered its final path, the hype of the Wano arc, the revelation of the correlation between Luffy and Joy Boy and the long-awaited Gear 5 ended up bringing many new fans to this amazing work. However, many people did not understand how Oda likes to work his characters, often using humor and fan service for this, and because of that I saw many people complaining about the character Brook without even understanding the reason why the character is like that and what is your weight within history. Yep, as much as Brook is saddled with a lot of malicious fan service, it all has a reason. His trajectory, his music, and his connection with abandonment and death are also linked to Brook's eccentric personality. Did you know that? Well, we are going to analyze all this in today's video. So if you want to be a pirate king like me and achieve eternal glory, go ahead and press the like button with all the power of your devil fruit. And if you're new here my dear sailor, already subscribe to the channel and don't forget to activate the notifications bell so you don't miss any new video, okay? Then join this crew that will dominate the entire Grand Line and the New World. Now without further ado let's get to this epic video. And well my dear pirate, in a past video I talked about Luffy's naivety and how Oda dealt with these hottest subjects within his work, Oda revealed that he knows the minds of his readers who are mostly men who are still in development. He also mentioned that he enjoys seeing the work of artists who use his work to flesh out their inspirations even as they make them even more malicious. However, Oda has already said that although all this seems forced or just to attract more people, he is sure that everything has a purpose. In Luffy's case, it's his lack of interest in women compared to his desire for freedom and being with his friends, it's not like he doesn't like women. He's attracted to Boa Hancock just as he's attracted to his crewmates, but that's not his main focus yet. And if we analyze Sanji, we will see another type of humor with fan service being developed. Sanji is the type of character that is the complete opposite of Luffy, he goes after his love objectives to the point of becoming a real nuisance for them, however he is still a gentleman who doesn't like having to face women in battle. So Sanji is stuck with this duality of wanting to flirt with a woman while he can never touch her, in the same way that he knows that an enemy can hurt his friends but he still prefers not to face a woman. But what about Brook's case? How did Oda develop this character and his comedic tenor? Well, Oda once said that bringing Brook to the Straw Hat crew would be interesting to make a counterpoint between him and Sanji, in which case, Brook would be more incisive and because of that he is always saying this. However, as mentioned in Luffy and Sanji's case, Brook's case also has a motive. Oda has a style of humor well based on Japanese culture. We have seen this more malicious style of humor in various styles of anime, shounen, Sinan, Shoujo, even in anime whether slice of life or sport anime we have this type of humor, however Oda has that slightly more old-fashioned style, much like Akira Toriyama's humor. And as I also mentioned in the video about Luffy's naivety, while Dragon Ball was moving away from this type of humor as time went by, in One Piece it was the complete opposite, the more criticism Oda received about his humor, but this type of humor was to place it within his work, but with a difference. While in Dragon Ball it was humor without any kind of foundation, in One Piece Oda managed to draw some parallels with our reality so that this type of humor would not be so appealing. Of course, everyone can have a different opinion on this subject. I myself don't like this type of humor as much at the current age than I am today, but it is undeniable that the way in which Oda introduced this humor was very interesting, and this is where Brooke comes in. As we know, Brooke's past is sad, it is closely linked to losses due to the death of his friends on the crew, to abandonment as in the case of the Laboon Whale and it is linked to death itself. Brooke ate the devil fruit called Yomi Yomi Nomi that gave him the chance to revive, but Brooke is already a person who has seen everything, if we count his age to the present day, Brooke would be around 90 years old and that it's a relatively long life, and that's what Oda wanted to reveal to it. Japan is a country culturally very connected to tradition, but this has been lost due to westernization, and even though older people there are extremely respected, almost an obligation within society, over the years this is getting lost. And because of this, 
Many elderly people in Japan are having to live their last days in solitude, and this is very sad. Brooke was alone for 50 years and even after his death his carnal desires have not gone away, not completely, he eats, drinks and even bleeds or feels tired, and most importantly, he is still attracted to women. Many see an old and elderly person and think that he no longer has any role in society or that he doesn't need to do anything else and just has to wait for the end of his days. But this is not even remotely right to think about, an elderly person still feels the same feelings as a young person, sometimes he feels even more because he has the nostalgia factor and longing for old times, for people who are gone, for women he knew, of the children and grandchildren he had. Brooke's loneliness was one of the saddest things that Oda introduced in his work, because it is in parallel with the idea that the elderly are already disposable because they have already fulfilled their role in society, which is not true. Yes, I know that sometimes Oda crosses the line with his type of humor, but even so, he understands that this can be used to show how our society works, because an elderly person cannot live in society anymore because his loneliness is inferior to ours and why an elderly person cannot have a loving relationship with other people? That's what Oda wants us to think beyond fan service. Rook is from another time, and even though he is a gentleman he still makes mistakes for being alive in a time where the world is no longer the same for him, maybe in his time making those kinds of requests weren't so offensive but that it just goes to show how he is literally dead in his past and this current Brooke just wants to do as much as possible since he has the gift of immortality, well, unless he gets thrown into the sea. That's why I disagree when they say that Brooke is just a character created for fan service, when in fact he is a character created to question how we treat people who have already lost everything in this life. Can you imagine what the last grand meal an old man had, what the last woman he was with, must have been like? Brook is there to show us what that loneliness is like, he reveals to us how an old man would act in a modern world because no one is willing to help and teach him and the best that many of us do is simply abandon that person. But now I want to know your opinion about everything we commented here today. How do you see Oda's style of character development and style of humor related to fan service? Could it be that Brook or even other characters like Sanji are just characters created for malicious fan service? But of course, if you made it this far it's because you like the content, so it doesn't hurt to subscribe to our channel and become one more member of our fleet, my dear sailor. And of course, do not forget to press the like button that helps a lot in spreading the video and the channel, so help us to become the largest fleet of pirates here on YouTube, okay? A big hug for everyone, and until the next video.